Now, okay, we'll come into this profitability ratio. Okay, now, basically, this ratio is to measure how effective a firm in using the asset to manage the company and to gain profit for the company. Okay, so basically, the higher the ratio is better, means that the higher the ratio, it means that your company is very good in, very effective in managing the assets to gain profit. Okay, so you have four four ratios here so basically we have this one okay gross profit second net profit net income or we say net profit third is net income net profit number four here okay one two three four so if you still remember your statement of comprehensive income okay if you still remember your statement of comprehensive income you have sales minus your cost of goods sold you have your gross profit now, after minus of your gross profit, you have your expenses. Then, after my mi after minus these expenses, you will have your net profit. Okay, net profit. So this is the statement of comprehensive income. Okay, so basically, these two, first two, one and two, this one, you will compare. Okay, you will compare sales figure and the gross profit. This is for gross profit margin. And for the second net profit margin, you'll be comparing sales and the net profit, okay? So this is the first two. Then the next one, okay, you'll be comparing, if you still remember this, asset equals the liability plus equity, okay? So the net two, return on investment and return on equity, you'll be comparing your net income, net profit. First one, return on investment, compare net income with the total asset here. This is the return investment. If the next one for return equity, you'll be comparing your net income with the equity. Okay, so this is the four ratio that you are having here. Okay, now we'll go through one by one here. Okay, now, okay, now we'll go to this gross profit margin. Now gross profit margin, basically, they are looking at the money that left over from the revenue after accounting for the cost of goods sold. Now, what is this sentence means? Basically, it means that your sales minus cost of goods sold, you have your gross profit, right? So this gross profit is the money that left over from the revenue. Revenue means your sales after accounting for the cost of goods sold. After accounting for the cost of goods sold means after minus Okay, after minus the cost of goods sold. So, money that left over from the sales after minus the cost of goods sold. Get it clear? So, basically, it's here. Money that left over. This is the money that left over from revenue. From revenue after minus the cost of goods sold. Okay, so we are looking at the proportions of it. Okay, we are looking at the proportions of it. Now, here, second definitions here. Or we say second meanings of it. Gross profit margin is served as the source for paying additional expenses and future saving. If you still remember your statement of comprehensive income, after gross profit, you will have expenses, right? And then you will have net profit. So here, gross profit margin is served is served as the as the source for paying additional expenses. So this one is the additional expenses here. Any expenses that you have, for example, rental, electricity, water bills, all this is additional investments, additional expenses beside the cost of goods sold. Okay, and the future saving. Future saving will be referring to this. Okay, the net profit. Let's say you still have a lot of net profit, you will keep it for the future for the future investment. So this is what we say the future saving. Okay, so basically in your gross profit margin, we are looking at this here. They are expanding this portion, expanding this part, and this portion is expanding this part. Okay, now we'll go on here in this gross profit margin. If you look at this here, gross profit from this example, from this example, you'll find out that the sales and the gross profit, you are purely using statement of comprehensive income. So, gross profit is 575 <coughs> minus your 1450, not minus, divide, okay? Then you get 
39.7 percent. Now, what is this 39.7 percent means? Now, let's say we upgrade it to 40 percent. Okay, so what does this mean? 40 percent of gross profit margin. It means that every one ringgit dollar or one ringgit of sales I make, okay, I will have a 0.4 cent is the gross profit. Now, what is the meaning here? Let's say, for example, if I have a sales of 1,000, I make a transaction and I gain 1,000, okay, from the transactions. After minus of my cost of goods sold, the money that I pay for raw materials or this, I will left, I will have a leftover of 400. This 400 is the gross profit that I gain. So I have this 400 for me to pay my additional expenses as well as for future saving. Okay, now, so this is the meaning here. Now, basically, we say, we say, is the higher is the better. Okay, the most it can go for, it, it can't be more than one. Because one means that whatever you earn is totally equals to whatever is that you have in the gross profit. You don't have any cost of goods. So, it can't be, okay, normally. Because you have, you have to pay for raw material, you have to pay for certain costs, okay. So, the most it can be is one but normally it can't be but okay now here we say the higher the gross profit margin is better the reason is because the higher you have means that you have more money to pay for your expenses or you have more money for your future saving okay now we'll go on to the next one net profit margin now if you understand gross, gross profit margin it'll be easier for you to understand this net profit margins now in net profit margins the idea here is that to measure Okay, to measure how much of the how much of the uh sales that the company make actually keep in the earning, keep in the earning. Now, if you compare this with this gross profit margin, then you will find out this is the money that for additional investment and future saving, but for here it go back to keep in the earning only, purely for earning and purely for keeping in the earning. Okay, it's no longer need to pay any expenses, any cost. No, it's only for keeping the company as the future saving. Okay, so here, higher profit margins indicate a more profitable the company that has better control over the cost compared to its competitors. Now, what is this sentence means? Basically, you have to compare that only you know. Let's say you have a forty percent of net profit margin, and the competitors have only thirty percent. So basically, it means that your company is having a better control over the cost, okay? Because if you look at your statement of comprehensive income, then you'll find out that you have sales minus cost of goods sold, okay? Ma then you have gross profits, then you have expenses. After all, then you have this net profit, okay? Now, in this net profit, if you look at this, if you have 40% and competitor has 30%, meaning is... Every one hundred of sales, the every one hundred of sales that I make, after minus this, after minus this, forty percent, you will have a leftover of forty ringgits. Competitor is hundreds, after minus this and this, they will have thirty ringgits. So we, when you have a higher, uh, net profit margins, basically the meaning is you have a better control of the cost. Okay, you have a better control of the, of the cost because here, you minus this and you minus this and the leftover in is more than they are your competitors. So we say you are, you operate the company in more effective way because you, you are able to control the cost co lower compared to your competitors. Okay, now we'll go on. If you look at these examples, okay, um, it's quite similar to the gross profit margin but it's the explanation is quite similar. It's just that here you get a figure from different areas. Okay, it's still sales and you compare with your net profit. Now, if you compare this one with just now, then you figure out just now gross profit margin is 40%. And now come to net profit margin, it turns to become 11.2%. Okay, it's a, there is a Reduce okay, quite a lot reduced. So basically, you will find out that your expenses, 
okay, your expenses, operating expenses, income, expenses, tax, all this, it created the reduce here. Now, what do we mean by this 11%? Okay, 11% of gross uh, net profit margin. What is, what is the meaning of this thing? Now, basically, it means that every 1,000, for example, every 1,000 of sales, at the end, after paying off, pay off all the expenses, okay, all the costs, all the raw materials, all the factory buildings, fees, rental, electric, okay, water, whatever you can think of, after paying all the expenses, you have a leftover of 110, okay, so this is the meaning of this 11%, okay, now, then we go on, is it, uh, before we go on, is it better, what do you think, is it better to have a very high net profit margin or very low net profit margin? Now, for a company, basically, for a company, some of the company, their net profit margin is very low, but they're able to make a good profit. The reason is because of the volume. Volume. Okay, now, their sales, let's say this, every single sales, they only make 5% of net profit margin. But, Every day they have a huge million billions of transactions. So because of this volume, they are able to make profits. Okay, they are able to make profits. But some of the company, let's say they are selling something luxury goods, their net profit margin is certainly very good, very high. Okay, compared to those who are selling daily product, okay, milk, noodles, all this, their net profit margin basically is very low. But because of their volume is very high, they are able to make a profit. So you cannot compare a company that is selling a diamond with a company that is selling a milk because their net profit margin and the ways they operate the company is different. So you still have to compare for the firm within the same within the same industry. Okay. Now we go on to this return on investment. Okay. Now. Look at this return on investment. Basically, the idea is how profitable the company is relative to the total asset. Now, basically, the idea here is, um, is, is your company manage your asset well or not? Total asset. How effective is your company using the total asset to generate income? The total asset including your factory, your motor vehicles, okay, your machines that you have, the computer that you have. Okay, whatever asset you can think of, how effective? Okay, if your profitability, um, or we say the return of investment, the ratio is very high. Basically, it means that you are managing well. Okay, you manage the asset well. You use it effectively, fully utilize it to generate income. If compared to the competitors or compared to the company in the same industry, your return of investment is very low. So we say. You have something wrong with your management style or whatever reason. It costs your management of or it costs your use of the total asset is not as effective as others. Okay, as effective as other, for example, the competitors. Okay. Now here, how effective the management is using the asset to generate its income. Now, higher return of. ROA uh, stand for return on asset. Okay, the higher the return on asset or return on investment, the better it is because you will have more. You generate more money. Okay, generate more income with less investment. Means that I don't. I do not need to buy new asset or new factory or new machine, but you will be able to generate more income based on that. Okay, now if look at these examples. Return on investment. Now, return on investment, if you look at here, they are comparing your total net income compared with your total asset. So, net income basically is your net profit. Okay, compare with your total asset here. Okay, now here, if you look at this, then you find out the return on investment is 6.4%. Now, by purely looking at 6.4%, I can't tell you it's good or bad because you have to compare. You have to compare to those who are in the same industry, okay? Now, this one, look at this, 6.4%. For certain industry, it might be very good. For certain industry, it might be very bad. Because, um, for example, in IT industry, or we say those finance industry. In finance industry, 
the asset that you need or basically we say you only need a computer okay with calculator or very good computer system or computer software then you can come up with all this analysis then you can make decisions so the total asset that you need is less compared to those who are do during a mechanics or whatever they need a heavy duty um, machines okay for this type of industry they need to invest more in their capital so the total asset that they require for that industry will be high so i can't tell you but purely looking at this 6.4 percent is it a very high or low you have to compare with those company in the same industry okay so when we have a higher basically basically okay when we have a higher ratio it means that you're managing the company well when you have a lower ratio let's say this okay let's say my total assets is 1000 you are able to generate 100 net income means that 10 percent okay now compare with your competitors who has 1000 or so but their net income is 200 so you have 20 percent now compare in this way then i will be able to tell you your competitors is in a good performance compared to yours your performance is very bad because having the same amount of asset same value of asset but they are able to generate more income compared to your company you have only 1000 they are, they also have 1000 but your profit is half less than 100 for them okay compared to them so then you'll find out that your company is actually the managing is not very effective it's not very effective in managing your asset okay so purely looking at this value it does not mean anything unless you compare it okay now we'll look at this next one okay before we look at this here it means that another meaning of this is every one six point four percent right another meaning of this is every one hundred or every one thousand that are invested to buy the assets you will be able to generate 64 ringgit as my profit okay as the net profit for the company okay every one thousand that i invested you will be able to generate 64 ringgit as the net profit for the company so this is the meaning of the 6.4 percent okay now we'll go on to the last few slides return on equity now if you still remember your asset equals to liability plus equity so return on equity is comparing your net profit with your equity okay how much you have invested into the company it will be the net income return as the percentage of a shareholder's equity okay now measuring this one to measure how profitable a company is by compare okay is by comparing how much a profit that a company generates with the money that i invested for example i invested one thousand in this one thousand that i invested how much you will be able to generate profit okay how much profit you'll be able to generate okay now we look at this ratio basically you still use your net income compared with your shareholders equity so the ratio that you have here is 9.53 percent now what's the meaning here it means that basically let's say this example every 1000 that i invested you will be able to generate 95 ringgit 3 cent as the net profit okay 95 ringgit and 3 cent for every 1000 that i have invested you will have 95.3 cent as the net profit okay now does it mean it's a good sign or bad sign we don't know until until we compare with the competitors so if you look at this the industry average okay industry average now if you look at this industry average gross profit margin yours is better than theirs okay so basically we say your cost of goods so you you control your cost of goods so very well because it's slightly higher so you control it well but if you look at net profit margin if you look at this it's it's lower so it means that you does not control expenses as well you have a higher expenses compared with your competitors okay you have a higher combat expenses compared with your data compared with your competitors that's why it caused your net profit margin to drop okay then you go on you look at this return on investment return on equity 
if you look at these two, then you find out your figures is basically lower. This company, the figures is basically lower than the industry. So you will see that when your figure is lower, it means that you do not manage the company here. Return on investment is look at the total asset, right? So instead, it means that you do not manage the asset well. It means that you do not use the amount, the total asset effectively in order to generate more profit. Okay? And the return on equity is lower than the company, uh, the industry. So it also means that you do not generate a very good profit compared to your competitors. That's why you see the Ramon is crying. Okay? Now here. Okay, basically, this is the things that you need to know. For ratio by itself, you calculate all the ratio by itself. Is, is that not, do not bring any meanings for your company. You have to compare then only you know what is the meaning, how is the performance of the company. After all, you after this, then only you can decide whether you should continue to invest in this company or whether you should sell the shares of the company. Okay, now that's all for this one.